and he thirty. May Allah be pleased with him. Narrated that Allah's messenger said, Certainly Allah exalted has laid down obligations, so do not neglect, neglect them, and has given limits, do not exceed them. He has also prohibited some things, do not violate them. He was silent over some things out of mercy for you, not due to forgetfulness, do not delve into them. Commentary Allah, the exalted, has legislated for his servants what will bring benefit to their religious and worldly life. His saying laid down obligations, meaning he has enjoined obligations. The word fard is the same as wajib. It is said that fard is more trust, stressed than wajib. Wajib is what for which the doer is rewarded, and whoever abandons it may be punished. That he that is he enjoined obligations and obliged them of righteous deeds and act, and acts of worship such as the five daily prayers, zakat, the Ramadan fast, pilgrimage to the sacred house of Allah, sake kindness to the parents and other forms of obligations. Those that are between the servant and Allah and those between the servants among themselves, such as kindness to parents joining the ties of kinship and kindness to those in need. It is not allowed to abandon these obligations. It is compulsory to carry them out. Then he said, do not, so do not neglect them, meaning do not abandon them or be lax in regard to them because they are for your own benefit and are among the mainstays of your religion. The religion is established up upon prescribed duties and obligations and then the recommended deeds among the righteous deeds, the supererogatory deed duties, remedies, remedy the the obligatory ones, if there are deficiencies in them, and perfect them. The mustahab recommended deeds are actions for which the doer is rewarded while the one who leaves it is not punished. This is the meaning of uh, a mustahab act. He is saying and has given limits. Limits, uh, as occurs in the Arabic text, means a preventive Allah has set limits for the servants among the allowed things which they must not transgress. They are sufficient for them, such that they are not in need of the forbidden things. So Allah permitted good things for th his servants and forbade them evil things. There are halal lawful things and there are haram unlawful things. These are the limits of Allah. Glorious is he and exalted. So the permissible things should not be exceeded. Allah the exalted said, These are the limits ordained by Allah, so do not transgress them. Likewise the prohibited should not be neared. Allah the Exalted said, These are the limits set by Allah, so approach them not. This is position of a Muslim with regard to the lawful and unlawful. He should take the lawful and good and suffice with it, and avoid the unlawful and whatever means that leads to it. And approach them not in the above verse means do not follow the means to them out of precaution. So a Muslim should stop by the limits of Allah, the mighty and sublime. He must not transgress them. He should only stick to the lawful and permissible and abstain from the prohibited. Then he said, and he has also prohibited some things. The prohibited things are numerous, Allah the Exalted. Forbidden to you for good, for food are al-maytata, the dead animals, cattle, beasts, not slaughtered. 
He also said, whereas Allah has permitted trading of forbidden riba usury, some have been mentioned in the clear-cut text, while Allah has prohibited some others. The basic rule about the prohibited thing is that it is unlawful. It could be disliked out of precaution when there is a proof that commutes it from prohibition. His saying and silent over some things. He neither allowed nor forbade it. Do not ask about them because Allah was silent about them. Searching for them would bring hardship to the people as long as they were silent upon them. Leave them the one who does them is not blamed because the allowed things are silent upon. The permissible are things for which the doer is not basically rewarded, and the one who believes it is not punished. Allah was silent over them due to some wisdom. He was not silent out of forgetfulness. He was rather silent about them, out of mercy for you, not to cause you hardship. He's saying, not due, due, due to forgetfulness. Certainly, Allah the Mighty and Sublime never forgets because forgetfulness is deficiency and absent-mindedness. Minded, Allah the Mighty and Sublime was not silent over them because he forgot them. He only kept silent out of mercy for you in order not to bring you difficulty. He's saying, do not delve into it, into them. Whatever has a proof showing it to the, be lawful, take it, and whatever is proven to be unlawful, abstain from it. And whatever was not mentioned, do not search for its ruling, because were it to, were it to have a ruling, Allah, glorious is he and exalted, would have explained it. The Muslim should follow these guidelines in his religion, life dealings, and conduct. He should carry out the obligations and avoid the prohibitions and observe the limits of Allah. He should not transgress them nor ask about what he, what he and the people are not in need of. Allah the Exalted said, O you who believe, Ask not about things which, if made plain to you, may cause you trouble. But if you ask about them while the Quran is being revealed, they while they will be made plain to you. Allah has for forgiven that, and Allah is of forgiving. Most forbearing before you, a community asks such questions. Then on that account they became disbelievers. Obligations and questions that, that one does not need are prohibited. Ask in accordance to your need only. Do not overburden yourself with something you are not in need of or what the people are not in need of. 